Pablo, 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 Pablo. Good morning, Mr. Paul Reed Smith. How are you doing, Paul? Is this story time? Maybe get dressed up in my own hat. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Hey, you doing, Paul? Hey, what's happening, man? Hey, what's up? How are you, man? Are you okay? And that is a ridiculous piece of wood. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfect, Eric. How are you? Hey, man. I'm okay, man. The man, the myth, the legend. Paul Reed Smith. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Maybe we have stories for each other. Man, dude, man. I'm going to tell you an interesting thing, and, I'm, uh, and I know we rolling along, is I saw uh, some of these sessions that you were doing, and I think I saw it maybe a couple of months ago, and I reached out to Beverly and said, man, tell Paul I want to do one of those with him. And sure enough, Beverly hit me and said, you know what, Paul wants to do one with you, so here we are. <laughs> Look, Eric, it's nice to have you on. You're an extraordinary guitar player. And, I, I try. And, huh? I said, I try. What do you try? I you try. play you met you play a beautiful kind of guitar with it with when you make high end sound good. Thank you, man. Thank you. I Not so it. easy to do, as you know. Hey, man. Hey, man, it can be a task. It can be. So you play different than everybody else, and you're saying you started at four years old. Can you explain how that all went? Well, I started at four years old, and, you know, I was in a, a family that already were playing music, and it was just there, and they played left-handed, upside down and backwards. But when I picked up the guitar, I just picked it up because that was what was comfortable to me. I had no idea what was right or wrong. I just rolled with it, and here I am. And so you've got all this extraordinary high end in your hands and the way you play, which is really hard to do because if you don't have good meter, that doesn't work. And how do you think True. about that? Well, I, 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 start, uh, I started out on drums. As a matter of fact, I, you know, uh, would be around the house at three years old. I would be mimicking the drum patterns on the floor with knives and forks. So the drumming and my brother, older brother would be playing uh, cream, uh, vanilla fudge, blue cheer, you know, fog hat, Hendrix, Muddy Waters, Albert King, Wes Montgomery, Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed, Roy Clark, uh, Kenny, Kenny Burrell, everything. I had it all coming. You know what I mean? So, I guess that's where my early days of the timing came into factor. And uh, it just seeped over, I guess, from, from having the mindset, I guess, coming from a drummer uh, being, you know, in, in, the, in the meter aspect of it. But the other pieces of, 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 of the recipe that came, just came along through the years through different inspirations and uh, different influences that I, 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 I drew to pretty, 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 pretty seriously. So do you know that Eddie Van Halen and Carlos Santana also played drums? I did not know that. Wow. I did not know that. Well, that explains an awful lot about why you're such a good guitar player. If you started playing drums at that age, I mean, I meter came late to me, you know, and meter came early to you. Sounds like. Because well, if you yeah, can't play that yeah. kind of high end and get that beautiful tone in your hands unless you've got good meter, because it sounds out of time. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it. It. it uh, I never really thought about the relevance of, of uh, you know, the meter. You know, in 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 my playing. You know, I know I know I go through a lot of syncopations and rhythmic patterns that I like to dive off into, and I, and I, I definitely accredit that with, you know the drumming perspective and, uh, you know, other things that, you know, wind up contributing to what I do just as things that I picked up along the years, man. So somebody told me you got a new record that's getting produced by Bonamassa. Is that true? Yes, sir. It's actually wow. done. It's actually done. Uh, we went through a lot, man, getting this record happening. Me and my wife got COVID and, uh, we almost, we thought we were gone. We thought we were dead, man. It was bad. So we had to put that on hold for a minute and, you know, see about ourselves and get healthy. And then I lost my dad in December of last year. 
uh, my tech that had been with me for four years, he was found dead in his home, and I had to bury him on my birthday in October, October 29th. So there's a lot of hardships that has happened within this past year uh, on top of this pandemic and on top of a whole lot of things that, you know, you, and then when we first started the record, that was when, you know, the murder of George Floyd happened. And this just was a lot of things that were, that were, you know, it was a lot of energy that was uh, floating around, man, that, you know, it, 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 it came out on this record in a way that, um, I think everyone can relate and uh, the tones, of course, I mean, the tones and everything. And, you know, I actually used uh, the Paul, I used the McCarty on, on a song or two, uh, you know, just to get a little different shape of tone. You know, I am a single coil guy, but man, you can't beat them, them humbuckers for, you know, nice fat rhythm and, you know, lead too. you know, to be honest with you. So was there, was yeah. there an high end coming out of the pickups that you could deal uh, with it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We made it work, man. We're gonna make it work, man. Come on, man. You Did Caveman, who's Bonamassa's engineer, have anything to do with it? Who? There's a guy named Caveman that does a lot of Bonamassa's engineering. I was wondering if he was involved at all. Uh, I, well, we had uh, JJ Blair. I don't know if they call him Caveman or not. But no, no, that's never... a different guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, congratulations. Yeah, we I want a copy of it. I oh, want a man. copy. Yeah. Absolutely. We we got it slated to, we don't want it to get lost in the shuffle of nothing that has to do with the pandemic or COVID. So we want to give it a fair chance because this is out of the 19 records that I've done in my life. This is the biggest record of my entire life. And uh, then, are these and your songs? Out. Are they your yes, songs? Sir. Yes, sir. Wow. I co-wrote, I co-wrote with Kev Moe, Tom Hambridge, you know, Josh, Josh, Josh Smith co-produced the record. Uh, 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 James House, uh, even my wife LaDonna came in on some of the writing on this record, and we got it slated to come out January of 2022. All right, so I don't know if you know that Kevin and I are good friends. Hey, Ke man, Kevin's good friend with a lot of people, man. He's a good man. Good dude, really good dude. So for the people watching, Kevin is, is Kev Moe's name, and yes. um, I, you know, in my world, you couldn't call... Uh, it was Chuck Brown, but if he, if you got the right to call him Pops, that was, you know, then you'd made grade, right? Oh, so oh in that yeah. world, if you can call Kev Mo Kevin, yeah, maybe You're you made right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I found out about that his name was Kevin when I heard him sing Grand Grandma's Hands, and he referred oh, yeah. to his grandmother call him Kevin, and I was like, oh, that's his name. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So I didn't know who he was, and he and I was in my booth at Nam, and there was this beautiful human being in my booth, glowing. And I looked at Gary Granger, the great bass player, said, "Who's that?" He goes, "Oh, that's Kev Mo." I was like, "Oh shit, yeah." You and make sure you tell Gary Granger that I got a cup. Y'all sent me a couple of his bases, and yeah. man, them things sound amazing. Cool. Wow. Woo. I will tell I got, him. I'll tell him today, Garrick. I'll man, tell him. Man, man, they sound great, man. So, you have a nickname, Raw Dog. What's that? Raw Dog is a name that I began to have earlier in my career because of how I was living life. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if you know my story, but in July, everything stayed the same. I'll be coming up on five years clean and sober. And so, like, that was, like, the label for the lifestyle that I lived. I lived uh, just a raw dog life, you know what I mean? But also, it transferred over into my style of playing. You know, it's raw. It's right there. It's in your face. It is what it is, you know, just raw dogs. So that was a, that was an overall name that stuck with me, you know, and uh, it, it, it has it has come to be something that people are getting more familiar with, you know, and uh, it, uh, it, 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 it gives it, it gives a, I think, a, a fitting description of who I am as a person and a player. The playing still got that real uh, guttural feel to it. Is that what you would call it? I think uh, that's a good way to put it. Guttery, gritty, 
you know, it, it, it has those elements, but at the same time, it all depends on what mode I'm in. You could have, you know, these beautiful white doves or waterfalls or clouds or, you know, just, just uh, beautiful scenery, you know, at the same time. But at the same token, it can get grit grimy and, you know, real raggedy if need be. You know what I mean? So I there is a, yes, a, there's a, you know, I think there's a balance that I've worked on for many years uh to to have and being able to step into uh a certain parameter uh, uh when called for and uh you know i'm still working on the craft i'm never a hundred percent content but you know hey i i'm very pleased in the progress i put it like that that's cool so you've done a lot of covers of a lot of tunes including hendrix tunes I got the opportunity with Wizard and Gary and um, uh, I don't know if you know Randy Bowen, but we got a chance to do Machine Gun and and, and uh, Freedom, which was fun. Wow. So of all that stuff, all those covers you've done, what was the one that just really got your heartstrings? What was the one that you just loved? Man, a lot of people would often think that I would say Little Wing and it is, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, my whole thing in doing cover songs is to take the song and show how it inspired me to, mm -hmm. you know, throw things in there that inspired me with. And, you know, the what pulled at my heartstrings, I would say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tie for May This Be Love and, and Little Wing. Both of them are very beautiful pieces of music. Me and Eric Johnson on the Hendrix tours when I was on those tours, we would pair up and do May This Be Love every night and there wasn't a dry eye in the house, including me and Eric uh, while we were playing. Uh, but those are some of the tunes that uh, really, you know, Hendrix got so many that'll pull at you, but I, I have to say May This Be Love and, and Little Wing. I like that answer a lot. Yeah, man. <laughs> so when I was a kid, my brother took me to a record store. And he showed me a record with this black guy with two eyes on his shirt and two white guys with froze just like him. And he said, these guys are big in England. And this is going to be big in the States. And I went, okay, fine. And I took the record home and I did the sacrilegious thing. I took the cellophane off when my brother went out on errands and I played the record without his permission. Holy. And when I got to Are You Experienced, I was done. Dang. I was cooked. It was <laughs> over. I was toast. Yeah, man. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know anything. All I knew was this music had moved me in ways I couldn't deal with. And my brother didn't get mad at me for opening his record. Wow. Hey, man, you know what? I think you and everybody else in the world that has been exposed to that record, uh, 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 that record, but specifically that song, is enough to make you have to call the doctor for a prescription. <laughs> You're fun. You're fun. All right, so do you have any questions for me, Eric? You wanted to do this, and I'm having the time of my life doing this with you. So what, what did you want to ask me? My question for you is, I got a couple. All right. First is what got you into the whole business of – guitar making eric i want to be a guitar player and if yeah. i played at washington music everybody ran away but if i opened the case that i had made it drew a crowd <laughs> and i had to pay attention to the world's feedback they didn't want to hear me play a note but they wanted to see the guitars that i oh, made man. and for me you know I, I thought I had a good sound in my hands. I had a beautiful vibrato. I thought that I had something to offer, but my guitar playing did not mature till recently. Gary Granger walked in my office one day. He said, I've been thinking, he auditioned me, me, he and Greg auditioned me for a year and a half in Julia Nixon's band. And I used to come to all the gigs and play for free. And one day Gary walks to my office. He says, I've been thinking about this a long time. I'm your new bass player. I said, Gary Granger doesn't have the right to walk in my office and tell me he's new, our new bass player. That ain't going to happen. He goes, well, I just did it. Mm. And I got put in a school about wow. years. Right. Absolutely. 
I'm sorry, that ain't speeding up and that ain't slowing down. And right. And being in that cauldron of time and feel has taught me so much. And so to me, I wanted to play. I didn't want to make guitars, but I was naturally good at it. And the guitars we make aren't that dissimilar from what I made as a young man, but the playing has uh, been different for me. Um, I don't know. I, I love guitars. I love the music. A lot of people got into guitars so they get a date. I got into guitars because I like the sound. I like the yeah, motion yeah. of it. I like the way it felt. I, I, wanted, I wanted to be in the middle of that music. I thought the music was extraordinary. What was going on with the guitar when I got into it? It was expanding at a rate you can't even deal with. It. Every day something new would come out. It was like, you know... I, I, I love. I just loved it. I just loved it. So now I get to play a little bit. I'm in a recording studio, obviously. Um, I like getting good sounds. If you okay. ever come here, I would love okay. to show you how this place sounds. I, I mean, the way the sound in your hands I is what, what this place that. was built for to try to capture the sound in people's hands. And you got a sound in your hands. Oh, my God. I don't know that Raw Dog's such well, a bad that, name, that would be but it also has a real uh, uh, musical uh, thing to it, that which, which Raw Dog don't expose. There you go. There you go. Okay, my next question is, how do I buy stock into Paul Reed Smith? <laughs> I start with this video. You want to punch <laughs> stuff. All right, so I'm, I'm going to really answer your question. Let's go share yeah. food together. Let's go sit at a table and sit down and share food and do soul stock first. Let's get at a table with Jack and his wife and my wife and your wife, and let's sit down with Bev, and let's just go eat. And that's, that's the beginning of it. The, the beginning uh, of it, if you want to know somebody, go eat with them. I like it. I like it. I, that sounds like a plan. We seem like we need to have Bev set that up. Yeah. So where do you live? I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. So I ain't that far from you. No, and I live in the seafood capital, East Coast, Naples, Maryland. We have crabs and shrimp and you name it. There you, you like go, seafood? man. You like hey. seafood? I, I, absolutely. I love it. I'm going to show you who you sound like. You, you, you're pulling at my heartstrings. You don't understand. We lost this man. In my world, let me show you. Do you know who? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him before. For sure. All right, this is our king from my town. There you go, man. That's beautiful, man. And you sound like you sound. You got an accent like Chuck's, and I'm. Well, I'm, so well, cool. I'm, well, I'm, from, I'm from Memphis, so you know that. You know that's. I guess that may be where it come from. Okay, I'm in my kitchen, and my daughter is watching Chuck teach me a tune, yeah. and he's going on. I'm listening. To, I'm listening to the drums. I'm listening to the bass. I'm li he's like doing all these different parts of the tune, and my daughter looks at me. She says, "Daddy, I don't know who he is, but he's cool as shit, and I never heard you act like that." In other words, I was a student. See, there you go. I mean, you know, in life, there's always something or somebody to learn from. And as the old saying say, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you need to change the room. Where'd you get that one? I like that one. Hey, man, that's been around for quite a while. I if like that one. I'll steal that one. one. I, I got another one for you. All right, Here's go. One better. If you are in a position to be able to create change and you have, a, you're in a position of power. It's not about the example of your power. That's not the point. It's about the power of your example. Wow. You, you got some deep stuff. I want, I, I want food. I want to, I want to interview you. I want to get into this. I want to know. <laughs> what this stuff. I, so I you have more, man. All right. So maybe so maybe I come to you and we barbecue. Hey, ooh wee. See? I, see, we'd have to go to Memphis for that. Because, you know, I, I'm a little I'm a little I'm a little uh I'm a little 
jaded by it, but Memphis has the best barbecue in the entire world. So <laughs> that's where we'd have to take a trip to for the barbecue. You know, it's it's a different, it's a different. Even my wife, who is from North Carolina, once I took her to Memphis, she said, babe, I ain't had nothing like this before. It's a different thing down there. So, you know, that's that's what that's the barbecue capital right there. So, right. so I got taken to that place. I got taken to that place by the guy that runs Martin Music, and it was extraordinary. Oh yeah. It's a, it's about it's about twenty-five of them in Memphis. You know, the guy at Martin Music, uh Eric Martin. Good Eric dude. Martin. Yeah, good dude, man. Yeah, so you know, yeah, yeah. So uh, you have you had Austin barbecue? Have I had what? Austin, Texas barbecue? Yeah, but yeah, but it ain't the same to me. You know, <laughs> I, again, I could. It ain't the same, man. I mean, you know, Kansas City ain't the same. North Carolina ain't the same. It's not the same. You All know, right, let's and, and, and um, it just got to be from Memphis to know what I'm talking about. All right, last <laughs> question. <laughs> Look around the room and tell me the most special thing in the room, the thing that you adore the most about what's in your room. Um, what I adore the most in my bedroom that I'm in right now is looking at the spot where my wife lay beside me. That's really? the most that I adore. That, that is the only good answer, and that's got some courage to it that you even said it. <laughs> <laughs> You said it. <laughs> Eric, from I, the bottom of my no thank you so I was, much. I was, thank you, man. Thank you, man. This has been amazing, and uh, it's awesome, bro. Hey, man, I look forward to that meeting, and uh, here's to good things, and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch, man. Let's go eat. I want to make you another guitar. Let's do it. All right. <laughs>